<clears throat> All right, well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Happy Tuesday to ya. UL. UL. UL's kind of been killing it. I got some UL stuff not too long ago, a few weeks ago. One of those things was the Valerian 2 kit. It comes with a, a triple 18650 mod as well as a sub-ohm tank, and we're going to get to that in one second. But the other thing, the other thing I got from UL is this Soul Keeper. And I have been, first of all, I've wanted to do a product like this for a long, long time. Years and years, and nobody wanted to do it. I'm just glad it finally exists. And what the Soul Keeper is, is it's kind of like a, a regulated, unregulated mech mod. It's designed to look and feel and handle like a mech mod. And it does. It really does. When it's all together with the battery, with the switch on, with an RDA on there, it... <laughs> It just feels like a mech mod. It feels more like a mech mod than like any of the other tube regulated style batteries. Like, I mean, if we're going to talk about that Whirl battery or like the Nunchaku or like even that Freemax Twister, those very much feel like, you know, bigger ego batteries. Whereas this actually feels, feels like a mech mod. And what's great about this thing is you can use 18650s 2700s and 21700s that's it with no sleeves no nothing like that it all goes together so really beautifully well so let's just start off with this tube right here you're going to see a tube this is a painted tube i really like the finish on this i like the painted finishes that you well does they did a very similar finish to this on that valerian mod which we're going to get to in just one second but you can see threading threading. So this threading is set down a little bit deeper. This threading is right here up against the edge. And those are the things you're going to have to remember when you're doing your battery switching in and out because both the top and the bottom caps come off of this. So let's say you want to use 18650 battery. You're going to use the Soul Keeper. You're going to throw a single 18650 in there. I'm going to show you how to do it. So you want these threads that are recessed a little bit where there's a little bit of material there to be on the bottom. Tum. And then you take your top cap and you screw this all the way down in, all the way down in. Take your 18650, positive side towards the 510. Then you take your switch, screw this down just like this, and boosh, you're in 18650 mode right now. No battery rattle, no nothing. The UL Soul Keeper has this clicky 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 wired switch on the bottom this is not a mechanical switch this is a tactile wired switch in there there is a chip in this device and I, a lot of people are speculating i don't know where it is i don't know if it's in the top or if it's in the bottom i think it's in the bottom i believe it to be in the bottom because i believe this is where all of the safety is coming into it this tactile wired switch has to have a chip in there it's got things like reverse battery protection sort short circuit protection it'll fire as low as a 0.08 Eight on here and it has a maximum output of about 110 watts if you're using a single 21 700 battery so I'm gonna I'm gonna flip this around I'm gonna flip the tube around I'm gonna put this 510 threading back on the top and I'm gonna take a big honking Galisi 21 700 battery just slides in there bottom goes on again and as you can see now that it's in 21700 mode there's like this little gap between the body of the mod and kind of the switch that's one of those things I, I like it it doesn't bother me I used to use a lot of telescoping mech mods back in the day so having that like that little gap right there honestly just makes it feel much more like a mech mod to me I'm gonna throw this Turk RDA on here right now because it's 20 four millimeters this ul is 24 millimeters and it just look it feels functions and works like a mech mod this is a rather low build i have on here actually let me recheck the resistance of this build real fast on this vapor so gen mod which spoiler alert this vapor so gen mod is legit i'm going to be doing a review video for it soon but it is Ugh, it's legit. So these aliens in here are only coming out to about a 0.15, which on a single 21700 mech mod or UL Soul Keeper is gonna be uh, is gonna be just uh, damn near perfect. Let me 
liquid up these coils a little bit. Let me saturate these a little bit. The button on the bottom of the Soul Keeper, I can't even explain how much I love it. It feels like the perfect little tactile switch. It's like the perfect clicky tactile switch. This is kind of the switch I want on all mods. Like it's so clicky and so quick and responsive. Yeah, it just fires and fires and fires like a mech mod would fire. So if you're one of these people that are out there, and look, there's a lot of them, no judgment anywhere. If you're a little bit intimidated by mech mods or the idea of mech mods and things like that, the UL Soul Keeper it is going to be a great little hold your hand kind of baby step right into tube mechs. Just here you go, welcome. Maybe not even into tube mechs. Maybe this is all you'll ever need. Maybe you'll get a UL Soul Keeper and you'll be like, dude, I don't need a tube mech anymore. I got a UL Soul Keeper. It's rad, it's regulated, so it gives you real... Actually, I don't know if this is regulated, but I have noticed that as time goes on, I feel the battery sort of trail off. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that this is kind of unregulated, but with a chip and a tactile switch in there, because as the battery drops, you kind of notice, like a mech, a little bit of a, a drop in performance. But for all intents and purposes, this feels like a dope, nice, high quality, high quality mech. Let me show you, let me show you the switch one last time because this is a switch you don't need to hit just square on the bottom. You can press it really far over to the side and it's still gonna fire. In fact, you got this little LED indicator right there. When it's flashing green, your batteries are fully charged. It's gonna change to yellow and they're dying and it's gonna eventually change to red and it's like, hey, Dude, your batteries are basically dead. Replace your battery inside of this. Uh, this has kind of taken precedent recently over a lot of mech mods. And I'm even including new dope mech mods like that Keen mech mod, which I still really like. But on any given day, if having to choose between the Keen and the Soul Keeper, I, I constantly keep reaching for the Soul Keeper. I just love the way this clicky button feels. I love how it feels like a high quality mech, and I love that it vapes like a high quality mech. Soul Keeper. Soul Keeper is banging. So I kind of wanted to turn my attention real quick to the Valerian 2 kit. We're not going to spend a whole hell of a lot of time on this, but I do want to show you the tank and like kind of how to set it up. I've really been enjoying it. I have a few little gripes with the tank overall. Uh, it comes in this humongous package separated. There's one box for the mod one box for the uh, for the tank. These come in plastic boxes. You kind of get all sorts of literature on how to use your tank. There's battery warnings, there are extra O-rings, there's a bubble glass, there's a spare coil head, there's a 0.14 coil head and a 0.32 coil head. When I put the 0.32 coil head in here, it actually came out to like a 0.28, which Nah, that's that's fine. You just adjust your wattage a little bit. It's you know, there's there's no reason to cry over that little difference in resistance. This is a single strip of mesh on the inside. You know what? It's just going to be easier. It's just going to be easier if I just show you the GD tank. So this is the blue version of the UL Valerian 2 tank. You got an AFC here on the bottom. This is one of my main gripes with this tank. Honestly, is that AFC? It just moves too easily too easily all over the place. I don't like this airflow full open. I find it uh, very, uh, just too much air. Just way, way too much air. This is full open right now. Just cloud chasey, just so much air, way too much air. So what I like to do here, I can demonstrate it on this, uh, on this blue one a little bit easier. What I like to do is I turn the airflow down. I turn the airflow way down. I turn the airflow down to about there. It's just, it's just a tiny little, I don't, I couldn't even tell you what the millimeter of it is, but I close it down past halfway. It's about a quarter of the way open. And for me that like much more restricted lung hit is a much more enjoyable experience on this tank. Uh, 
I just like it. I like that resistance. It's still smooth. It's a little bit sharp, but it's not really turbulent. And because I like it closed down like that, I'm always having to readjust it to where I like it because just from handling this in and out of a pocket, on and off of a desk, in and out of a backpack, the airflow opens up again and I'll take a hit and I'll be like, nope, that's way too open. So I inevitably have to close down my airflow again. The airflow is just a little bit too kind of uh, loose and flowing, but this all comes apart. And the first thing that I always do whenever I get a sub ohm tank is I pull the coil head out of there and kind of verify that all the o-rings are in place verify things like that make sure that this isn't screwed into the base too far sometimes when they come directly from china these coil heads are just drilled into this base like with full force it'll compromise the integrity of the o-rings it can kind of lead to a leaking situation one thing that they have done to kind of correct any leaks that might happen through the center of your coil head if any liquid kind of condenses down here in the base, UL has this design on the bottom of their coil heads. And these are little inlets to your cotton. So the idea is if you get any liquid down there, you can kind of like slurp it, I guess, back up into the coil head. It's kind of like a little juice sort of recycling system. I have had no leaking issues whatsoever with this tank. It's just been fantastically saturated every single time or maybe I have had very slightly leaking issues with this tank but the juice recycling system is working so well that I didn't even notice. I'll let you be the judge of that. One thing that I do really really love on this UL Valerian 2 tank is it maintains this button where it just you press it it pops off there are two holes juice goes in one air comes out the other you snap it back down awesome works perfect every single time it is a 510 drip tip on top which might bum some people out i don't know it doesn't really bum me out you still get plenty plenty of airflow your 510 drip tip is not going to hinder your airflow in any in any capacity want to do it full open again let's just do it full open again Now I just noticed that if you drag really, really hard when it's full open, you get a nice, crispy whistle sound. Wow, that was just super whistly. Close it down again, Nick. Great. That is, that is a spectacular vape. The flavor, the airflow, the restriction of it closed down. I just dig the shit out of it. So this mod... This is a great little mod. It's not it's not flawless. It doesn't feel very like, you know, fancy or high end. I do like the paint job on it. I know a lot of people are kind of like, eh, I don't like this shiny kind of car paint finish. I really like it. I found it to be mostly durable. I've been trying to torture test this a little bit, dropping it. I'm constantly like knocking my wedding ring on it, trying to like take something off, take any flecks of paint off, but it just doesn't, and it's a tiny, tiny little size. It's about the same size as that, the last Reload that came out, the Reload Gen 3, that was a triple eighteen six fifty. that was kind of a real small pocketable guy. This is also a real small pocketable guy. It, it's also triple eighteen six fifty. so for a triple eighteen six fifty, it's a real small pocketable guy. Obviously, it's not as pocketable as, you know, like a pod system or something like that, but for what it is, the amount of battery life and power you're gonna be getting out of this, it's a it's a very it's a very pocketable thing. Clicky buttons, not a very beautiful screen like Vaporesso and some of these other companies have done, but it's real kind of straightforward. It shows you everything you need to know. It shows you your wattage, puff counts, uh, your batteries. It has triple battery indicators right there. It's got a door on the bottom, boop, like that. The sled is very clearly marked positive, positive, negative, negative, positive, positive. It just slides up and shuts over time. I don't know. This bottom door might get weird and wobbly. That tends to be what happens with these type of like spring-loaded trap doors on the bottom over time. I noticed it with that Ogvape V200, my one of my favorite regulated mods of all time. Just over time, that, that little battery door on the bottom just kind of gets a little bit loose. I'm hoping it stays it stays nice and tight because I'm really digging this kit. Before we get to brass tacks, do a real quick double toot. 
Oh, good. Well, that was completely useless. So l let's get down to brass tacks here. Are you going to need your vape budget hands for any of these UL products? Well, the Soul Keeper clocks in at about 60 bucks, which, I mean, that is vape budget hands territory, but it's also f a lot less expensive than what you would pay for like a real nicely made sort of mech mod. I, I don't know. If we're going to play the Aliens game for the Soul Keeper, yes. I mean, hands down. If they took everything, I want the Soul Keeper. I'll pay 60 bucks for the Soul Keeper. I want it. I'm treating it like a mech. I'm putting RDAs on it. And I absolutely, I mean, this is one of my favorite things of the year so far. This Soul Keeper of the year so far. Now, if we're going to talk about the Valerian kit, the Valerian kit, which comes with a triple 18650 mod and its own sub on tank with two coil heads, 130 to $135. Now, that is firmly, firmly into vape budget hands territory. And if you have nothing, if you have no kits and, and no sub on tanks and no mods or anything, this is going to be something that I think that you can really kind of grow into. This mod is real versatile. You can run RDAs, RTAs, sub ohm tanks on here, triple 18650s, lots of battery life, plenty, plenty of power for anything you wanna throw at it. Apart from the really slidey AFC on this tank, I don't really have any gripes with this Valerian 2 kit. I would have liked to have seen the 510 maybe centered in the middle. I feel like that would have given this mod a lot more versatility because if that 510 was centered in the middle, you got a lot more space up here. You could put big like 30 millimeter bangers on here, like a big 30 millimeter RTA, RDA. Could have just it could have just been a little bit more versatile as it stands. The 510s at the front, the UL Valerian 2 kind of comes right up to the edge. Nah, that's that's getting real, real nitpicky. If we're gonna play the aliens game for this particular kit, and they come and take everything I have, I got nothing left to vape. Is the Valerian 2 kit something I would seek out and buy right away? Probably, probably not. Probably not. But that doesn't mean it's not a rockin' kit. I have some triple 18650 mods. Like, yeah, I like this one. I like the finish. I like the size of it. I have a lot of sub ohm tanks. I do like the Valerian. And if the if the AFC held in place a little bit better, I feel like this would kind of be like my daily banger of a sub ohm tank. I just really very much enjoy it. This and that off roof have been like, you know two of my really like super reliable uh, sub ohm tanks. So I do really like this tank. If I could get probably this tank without the kit, that would be more along the lines of what I personally would be looking for. But your mileage may vary, your interests may vary. And uh, that sounds like enough rambling for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. UL Valerian 2 and the Soul Keeper. Uh, kind of a fan of both of them. Really just want to gush about the Soul Keeper. The Valerian 2 is, is a fine kit. It's a very serviceable sub ohm tank. I'm literally just repeating myself right now, so that's where I'm going to end it. No links are allowed in the description, so you're going to have to use your Google Foo all over the internet, but that's what I got for today, everybody. And no matter what is in your hand, yeah, let's keep on vaping.